I'm getting fed up, honestly. I am getting fed up. I am going to do something drastic. I'm going to do something that you never expected. I'll do something you won't like. Believe me, I'm getting fed up. Because this was, I mean, this was not the plan from the well, beginning. Whatever, you know, whatever, plan from whatever beginning. it is you want to do, it's no, it's no, there's no problem. Do it. Do it. Let's rest. Do it. We go. So hello guys, what's up and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's me, your girl Barista Neze, and this is Nezeville. Since our last video on Yule and Judy Austin, I have gotten countless of messages asking for updates. I take cognizance of the huge level of trust that you guys have reposed on me to give you authentic news. So I am never driven to substitute that trust for views. I have no single interest cashing out on rumors, stringing you guys on, and taking on due advantage of your curiosity. So I always love to wait, gather up enough information, and present you with straightforward videos filled with only facts. I appreciate that you always wait for me. So in today's video, I will be bringing us all the updates that have happened since our last video on Yule and Judy. And I will be telling you the whole truth on Yule and Judy Austin's much publicized fight and the purported breakdown of their relationship. Watch till the very end. The first thing that has happened is that after Judy took to Instagram to pay May's late son, Kam Bilichuku, the much condemned and criticized tribute, she took to social media to release a video, a very controversial video, which many people believe is some kind of shade to use first wife, May. Let us watch a little of it. I have a very big God. He is always by my side. He's a wonderful God. He's always by my side. We know. We know. I don't know where to start from. God loves me so much. I don't know if he loves anybody as much as he loves me. You will not understand. They said it's who that wears the shoes, know exactly where he pinches. But God loves me so much. He has continued to fight all my battles. I'm a special child. I am so special. Even till this last baby. Oh God, I have experience. So in this video, which by the way, came only one month after May lost her first son, Kambili Chuku, Judy explains to her audience that God loves her more than every other person. That God has always been there for her right from when she was a child. That God always fights her battles for her and help her to appear victorious. She says that she is the one that puts on the shoes and knows where exactly it pinches. So a lot of people hold this very similar and disturbing interpretation to these statements uttered by Judy. They believe that Judy was undoubtedly mocking May. Something like the calamity that was supposed to befall on her head went back to sender and befell May. That is exactly the meaning that people are attributing to this snide testimony which came just after one month after the woman whom she married her husband lost her first son. So what do you think about this kind of testimony guys? Do you share the same opinion with all of these people? Do you think that Judy was indeed mocking May and insinuating that Kama has befallen May, that she had her child successfully and May lost hers? That is the word out there. That is a lot of people's belief. Do you also share in that thought? Or do you believe that no, Judy was just giving a testimony. She has her own life. She has a right to praise God or sing or give testimony or live her life. And everything she does must not be linked or centered around May. Which of these two schools of thoughts? do you fall under? The next thing that happened shocked a lot of people. You, the father of the late Scambili, released a series of videos on social media showing him having fun, catching trips, and living his best life with his other woman, Judy. In this particular video, they were singing, giggling, calling each other pet names, and you know, just enjoying themselves. Look at this. Don't leave me out in the rain. Pouring back the nights when I 
help you be sad me who won't break my heart Hey, you did it! Maybe you need the album. Okay. Unbreak my heart, sweet darling. Do this what you cost when you walk out of the and walk down my life. Wonderful. You see, this whole drama is no longer about a woman who took another woman's husband. No. It has transcended far beyond that. It is not just about a man getting married to a second wife. It's not just about the drama and jealousy and backlash that comes with polygamy. This whole thing has gotten deeper. It has taken a totally new dimension. It's about the question of how a man can be so happy, so social media thirsty, so unscatched, so unbothered. Only a few weeks after losing his first child, his first son. Listen, every child and every son is very important to their parents, to their father, regardless of tribe. But I cannot begin to describe to you the enormity of weight that an Igbo man, a proper Igbo man, places on his son, on his first son. He is like his crown, his staff, his rod, his posterity, his future, the career of his name, his pride, his heritage, his continuity. He is like an extension of the man himself. Ask any Igbo man. So a lot of people are so flabbergasted about how you can move on so fast from the death of his first son. And I'm not just talking about maybe a six month old baby or a one year baby. I'm talking about a full fledged 16 year old boy whom he had spent 16 years living with, nurturing, loving, caring for, paying his school fees, playing dad. How is it so easy for him to become so happy in the space of one month? Smiling, jumping around, playing karaoke with another woman, showering pet names on her, while the woman who he had that child with, the woman who told him for the first time, we are pregnant, a woman who he probably rushed to the labor ward, a woman who he carried the pregnancy with, went through the sleepless nights that comes from having a newborn, nursed the child with, cared for the child with, took deliberations and decisions together on the count of that child, saw him through nursery to primary to secondary school. How that woman stays broken, devastated and alone while he takes to the streets just one month after the son's demise, living his best life with another woman. It beats a lot of people's imagination. Do let me know what you think about this in the comment section. Are you willing to cut you some slack and give him a benefit of doubt? Do you think that everybody perhaps mourns differently and him coming to showcase all of this on social media might be his own way of coping, his own way of mourning, his own way of surviving the tragedy, his own way of dealing with the loss? Or do you think that he is totally out of his damn mind. The next update on the Yule and Judy situation in what now seems like a full-blown pepper them mode getting activated came when Yule took to social media to share this video of Judy Austin's maternity shoot when she was pregnant for her second child with him. He titled the video Ijele Odogu, the pet name which he calls her, which can be literally interpreted as a queen to a king. We will recall that after only a few weeks, Judy bore her child. May lost hers. And a lot of people believe that you should be mourning rather than flaunting the pregnancy of another woman and flaunting the entrance of another child without caring. Completely insensitive about the way this would make his wife feel even more devastated broken and hot. But before we could digest the flagrant display of Judy's pregnancy by you, in what people have described as the wrongest timing, you took to his verified Facebook page to share a video of himself and Judy 
in a praise and worship session. Watch this. You don't want it upon the sea, Lord. You just was so good. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Once again, this got people very triggered. People were wondering who photographs themselves praying and then posts it on Facebook. It's not like you're in some kind of crusade or something. Who does that? Well, you and Judy does that. Totally immune to any kind of backlash that may come, these two remain unrelenting to draw attention, negative attention, constantly to themselves. Now, after having displayed all of these joyous moments and happiness, fans and non-fans were surprised. Many excited as a matter of fact. When this video of you and Judy Austin in a heated argument was posted online. Watch this. You started this thing again. I'm trying to talk to you in a the phone. The best phone, let's talk. But, but we are... Baby, this talk are lingering. Keep ago. phone, let us talk. I, you know, it's, not, it's not stopping the talk. It's not stopping the what talk. What is not stopping the talk? I was saying, say, keep phone, let us talk. You want us to talk, keep the phone. Block this, man. Keep phone. Whether you are more game thing about whatever it is, it's distracting you. If I'm talking, you listen to me. Keep it to whatever it is. You keep and you listen. I'm still hearing what you're what saying. You are being distracted. How? Being distracted. This How? <laughs> Shortly after this episode, it was closely followed by yet another video showing them in an even more heated altercation. Watch. I'm getting fed up, bro. You know what I'm for. I'm getting fed up, honestly. I am getting fed up. I am going to do something drastic. I'm going to do something that you never expected. I'll do something you won't like. Believe me, I'm getting fed up. Because this was, I mean, this was not the plan from the what, beginning. Whatever, you know, what, the plan from whatever beginning. it is, to do is no, no, there's no problem. Do it, do it. Let's rest. Do it because what are you giving me headache? Are you think you rest? You will not rest. Give me headache. Give me headache. Give me headache. I'll give you headache. Okay. That's how it works. You can't just come up like this and accept your mistake. You make a mistake. Nobody is perfect. You will see all the things that I'll bring out. Baby, bring out anything you want to bring out. You think I'm afraid of you? Yeah. Bring it out. Well, when this made it out, many people will not unexpectedly who had condemned and strongly criticized Judy Austin for getting married to May's husband. We are very excited that finally the scales are falling off Yu's eyes and they have started having misunderstandings. They were so excited to see what they have described as the beginning of the end of an evil relationship. But no, let me tell you what the truth is. You see, Judy and Yu have mastered the art of social media mind games and they are utilizing it to their advantage and enrichment. Now that they have seen that people have almost gotten bored of these posts where they project a perfect and happy relationship, they have introduced a new dimension, devised a new method to get attention, get people talking and cash out from the whole buzz. In other words, making money from a very very ugly and unfortunate situation guys you see if it was just a double marriage thing a polygamy thing a he hurt me she hurt me situation a betrayal story perhaps it would have been okay perhaps it would have been more tolerable but a life was lost here a child died why is you so fixated on how to cash out from this tragedy? Why catch Cruz with such sorrow? Why is he making a fool of himself and his family for this? Does it really mean that much to him? Does he care how his other three kids with me will grow up feeling? Could this be the best way to honor and preserve the memory of his first son? Didn't he mean anything to him? Like people wonder, doesn't he care about posterity? 
Like, even if he doesn't love May again, does he actively hate her? Doesn't he give a single care in the world about how she feels, how she's coping, how his behavior will make her feel, her mental health? Doesn't he care anymore about his reputation? About karma? No, nobody is saying that he cannot have fun and smile and kiss and make out with his other woman, Judy. But the question that triggers a lot of people is, must it be displayed on social media given the sensitivity of what has happened? Like what exactly is wrong with this man? So yes, contrary to a lot of people's beliefs, there is no fight or misunderstanding between Judy and you, at least for now. Scripted drama just for financial and attention purposes. Believe me, when or if drama begins it will be televised but not by either of them but it will be known and it will be my job to report it before we close this video i would like us to share our thoughts on a very very popular belief making the rounds a lot of people believe that yul is acting totally disconnected from reality and acting like someone who has lost control of his senses there is high speculation that he has been charmed bewitched, hypnotized, or what Africans call locked in a bottle. What do you think about this suspicion? Do you believe this or are you leaving all spiritual suspicion out of it, insisting that he is only a slow-witted, irresponsible, stubborn fly that follows the cops to the grave? Do you think again that these two have done absolutely nothing wrong as they are not the first people to get into polygamy? Or do you strongly still believe that karma is on its journey and someday, someday, it may be in a short while, it may take some time, but certainly it will get to its destination. Do let me know your thoughts, your feedback, your suspicions and your comments down in the comment section. So guys, we have come to the end of today's video. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, give this video a big thumbs up, drop your comments in the comment section and stay glued because we have so much more coming your way. Whenever something significant happens again, be very sure that I will bring it to your notice. It's me, your girl Barista Neze, and this is Nezaville. I'll see you guys in my next one. For now, bye.